Hey guys, Valentine's Day is coming up and I thought I'd do a little video on propagating some roses. Isn't it wonderful when your loved one buys you roses? But eventually, as all things, they wither and they die. I'm going to show you how to turn those roses into something before they get like this. So plants have several different methods of reproducing. You've got seeds, nuts, spores, even cloning. That is part of reproduction. It's considered an asexual reproduction method. So a rose's natural reproduction is by seed. After it gets a flower, it turns into a nice rose hip. Those are those big balls at the end of the cane where the rose once was, where the flower once was. After that, the seed hardens, goes into the ground, waits for a nice humid and sunny warm day, and then sprouts into a new rose. Another thing that the roses do do is occasionally a piece will fall off, land into the dirt, and will root itself. This is called cloning. This is making an exact copy of that rose. The quickest, cheapest, and easiest way to get a new rose is by cloning. We're going to be taking advantage of this natural rooting phenomenon and clone ourselves a new rose. A great historical reference of a successful cutting happened in 1885 when a young Scottish bride gifted her friend a rose from her family Scotland garden, now known as the world's largest rose, the Shady Lady of Tombstone, Arizona. You're going to need a very sharp tool to start. So, you've got bypass pruners, or you've got floral shears. In this case, you can use handy scissors, anything like that, as long as they are sharp and clean. You are definitely gonna need a container. You can do these little black pots that you can find in any hardware store. You can use peat pots, you can use a little metal container, even a solo cup will work. So what's really nice about these peat pots is that they decompose when you plant them in the ground. So you don't have to remove them or throw them away. Most important of all is your soil mix. I recommend going with the seedling starter. This is Biotone starter. It helps encourage root growth. So you may be worried about fungus, insects. Don't worry about that now. If later down the line you find that you have a problem and you're not sure what it is, please bring a cutting down. We'll help you diagnose the problem. So for propagating roses, one of the things you're going to look for is the stiffness of the rose. You don't want this top section. This is considered the first year growth, the new growth. You want something with a little bit more stiffness to it. Something that feels like it's going to break a little bit. So this section right here is good. So drastic measure, you're cutting off the head of the rose. I'm going to cut off the bottom right below my node. And the node here is where your new growth, your leaves, are going to come from. We're going to cut this out here, about a half inch below. Then we are going to scrape away this layer of flesh, wounding it. By wounding it, you're sending out an autoimmune response with the plant. It's going to be sending all its nutrients down for healing and all that activity spurs root growth. Then we're going to go further down because I can get two pieces out of each stem. I'm going to cut right here. Just wanted to show you the differences between the nodes. The nodes are wherever the leaf comes out. There's a node. There's a node. Here's one. 
Now, if you're just picking up stems and you're just like, oh no, which way is up? Just look at the nodes. The nodes are going to be pointing up and your thorns are going to be pointing down. So after that's all nice and clean, I am going to be dipping it in water. Then using my rooting hormone, dip the end of the rose that you just wounded into the rooting hormone and cover all that stuff that you just did. And this does just as the label says, and it just induces and encourages the plant to put out roots. You'll be then taking your loose, wet soil. You are going to take your pencil. I can fit several in these little squares. Just kind of make a hole about an inch. It's important. If you were to just shove your rose in there, the rose cutting with the rooting hormone, all the hormone scrapes off and you lose all that benefit that we just did for that. So we're just gonna put it into the hole that we just did, burying the node, and then just pinching back right there. So some people like to cut the leaves, I do, to, so it can still get some sun rays and still collect energy because creating new roots does take a lot of energy from the plant and this is just a stick. Now a lot of people just remove it all. I've done both ways and they both seem to work well. Then in four to six weeks you are going to tug on the plant, make sure it's firm. This will let you know if it actually successfully rooted or not. Anything that's rotting you want to take out, anything that's moldy, take out. Now the next step that you can do is you could put a two liter bottle, saran wrap, anything to create a greenhouse effect to create that condensation. You want a nice humid environment, but because mine are already in a greenhouse and we already have high humid temperatures in here, I don't have to worry about covering them. Four to six weeks later, you should have stuff like this. Now these are a little bit older. So this has a pretty nice root mass. I'll be able to move this to another pot. But at first, you're gonna see all your leaves die. And then you're gonna have new leaf growth. If you look further down, you can see where it's starting to get new plants, like new stems and new flowers that'll come out of these guys. These are your nodes. And this is just from a cutting. So this rose I did about three months ago. You can see all the new growth it's done. It's looking pretty healthy. So instead of throwing away that bouquet of roses, why don't you give it a try? Let me know how it goes. And as always, please like this video, subscribe to the channel, and share with your friends.